what's happening is that the top of their marketing funnels are expanding. Again, if we historically look back, back in the day when you had to go door to door selling vacuum cleaners, there were only so many households that you could hit, and a lot of people might not have been home. That's why tele centers in the 80s were such a profound revolution. And again, when we went from call centers to email marketing, companies expanded their prospect list once again. Now that's happening again through social media. Companies are able to tap into their rich social graph and be able to reach new audiences that they never could before through the customers they already have and their networks. Okay, so now let's talk about this convergence um, of social and local. I mean, more than ever, content is king. It's never been more important to have content. And you know, what is content? It could be, um, if you're a nail salon, educating your client base on uh, the new kinds of manicures that are, that are out there, or general hand and skin care. Uh, it could be deals, it could be promotions, it could be uh, any number of things, depending on the kind of business that you are. But the key point here is that there is content, and that, there's, uh, that that is what drives ongoing business value and continual engagement with your customers. Give them something to talk about, give them something to share, give them something that not only has inherent value to the customer, but it's so valuable that they have an incentive to want to share it with their friends. That they get social capital from being able to share it onwards after they consume it themselves. That's the key of social media content. The challenge of social media content is that in an age when we're getting hyper-local, and it really is about moving toward a more personalized and social web, that the one-size-fits-all message doesn't work. And there's a challenge, there's an onus on us as business owners to really aggressively segment our messages. And instead of creating one set of content now, we have to create two or three or even five or 10 sets of messaging, depending on how diverse our customer base is. Consumers are expecting more highly targeted, relevant content to them. And so, because our consumer base might be diverse, that means we have to invest in creating more content. Highly targeted. This, this speaks to my earlier point. I mean, being able to use all of that rich profile data now and being able to say, well, I only want to show these golf club ads to people who say they like to golf. Even if I want to run a brand campaign to reach everybody, I want to pay more, I want to bid more CPC or CPM for people who like to golf because I know they're more likely to convert. And I'll pay less for everyone else, else because it's, it's presumed that it'll be a lower conversion rate for me. And that's the, that's the way that smart companies are thinking about how to use social. And if you think about the future, I mean, there was, an early, I think, one of the last questions um, that John asked was, you know, would Facebook and Google ever emerge? I mean, I think that's the holy grail, is being able to combine the power of search and the here and now and, and the, uh, the demand that's currently expressed with all of this rich social and profile data. And so, where, where does that bring us? Where it brings us is this convergence of social and local. It's, it's uh, being able to combine the offline and online worlds in a way that, that was never before possible. I mean, before geolocation, uh, even just a few years ago, we, we lived largely separate lives. We lived an online life where we would um, sign up, we'd use email, and we would click on online ads, we would buy things from Amazon, and then we lived our brick and mortar life where we would go to Starbucks, or we would go to any brick and mortar store and live there. And today, those worlds are collapsing. And for bricks and mortar in particular, there's a tremendous opportunity to be able to combine not only the data from online and offline, but also the, the customer experience. Just like Frank Arderell was talking about a 24-hour fitness, taking all of those consumer touch points, whether it's social, online, mobile, uh, or actually physically in store, and making that seamless and consistent. And so what I'll leave you with is, um, is that, again, it's an exciting time, and you know, with search, we answered a very important question of what is the consumer looking for right now? And of course, a multi-billion dollar industry was created from that. With social and with mobile, though, we answer not only what is someone looking for, but who that person is, based on their profile and their friends, where that person is, based on their geolocation information, um, and, and how that person is accessing. Is it an iPad, an iPhone, uh, or, or a desktop? Is it a PC or a Mac? And you know, the holy grail of advertising, and 
really of, of consumer engagement is being able to deliver the right message to the right person at the right time. And from, for us, being able to, to expand from answering just what to now answering who, what, when, where, and how gives us more power and more targeting capability so that in the end, our uh, relevance goes to 100% and potentially convergence uh, could get there too. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.